Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back for the last full week of May, my reading wrap up. There is just a little bit that will, I think I'll just be calling either May week five or I'll be calling it Nope, I think I'm going to be calling it May Week 5 because I think there's more days of May in there than June. But it is a partial. And I am rambling. I do that. So let's jump into my reading wrap-up. So I have finished two books this week. And the first of those two, I promised in my last video that I was going to finish. And I did. And that is Crucible of Hell by... Saul David. This is a history book about the Battle of Okinawa in World War II. And I know I keep saying this, but I do love that we get all points of view of this war. It's not just the Americans, it's not just the Japanese, but we also get the Okinawans. And we get some British. I never knew there was some British Navy there at the time as well. I'd like that we get that, those perspectives in there. At the same time, there is another thread that goes through where it's looking back at Truman and talking about the atomic bomb. So you kind of see where those decision points were happening in relation to Okinawa. Okinawa really did influence Truman deciding to drop the atomic bomb. And it doesn't excuse Truman for doing that, but it explains why he made that decision. And I think that's good to know. Obviously, you can't say that if he lived in 2023, he'd make the same decision. But we, we don't know. And especially since we have Ukraine and Russia fighting and everyone right now is just helping on the sidelines. Looking at how World War One and World War Two went, it this looks like a possible World War Three coming as sad as that might seem. So I think especially history books about war right now are important to be reading that way we understand what's going on or that decisions in war are never one thing. They're based off of multiple factors. Then the second book I finished, way happier tone, was Falling in Love at Nightingale Farm by Emma Bennett, who is here on BookTube and AuthorTube. I became interested in this one because I like her her channel and I like watching her videos and then how she describes the romance that she writes this is a contemporary romance that is sweet and clean sweet because of how the characters interact with one another and then clean because there is no sex and my mom was looking for a romance recommendation for her church book club so I immediately thought of this and she bought this one and four more of Emma's books and then gave them to me once she had read them. So this is the most recent one came out in 2023. And this follows Polly, who has been made redundant with her job. So she's lost her job and she's looking for a new one, but she doesn't want to tell her family yet. And her, her past job was helping businesses recover and revitalize, except the company, what really what they did was destroy um, these businesses and try to build something new afterwards. And Polly never really liked that aspect, but hey, it was a well-paying job that was well known. So she's trying to find a new one before she has to tell her parents she lost her job. And her mother very nicely recommends her to a man who whose farm is struggling. And so he reaches out. Now, right then and there, I felt like I was seeing, because my mom would totally do that to me. I would totally get a thing going, oh, hey, your mom said that you can do this. Can you help me? Because she's done so in the past. <laughs> Hi, mom, by the way, because my mom does watch these sometimes. It goes from there, and then Polly decides, okay, she will help them. And she isn't telling them that she lost her job either, so she's saying like it's more like pro bono, she's doing it off of the commission, if they make money, she makes money kind of thing. And ends up falling in love with not only the farm, but also Mark, the son, who is 
been helping his dad. And so Polly makes a lot of suggestions to modernize it. The only thing that I wish Emma had done was to do alternating chapters of Polly and Mark's point of view. We get this all from Polly, except chapter one is Mark's point of view. So I, I was expecting to get more of Mark and I think that it would have enhanced the book. It's still good. It's a solid read. I did kind of want his point of view sometimes, especially when Polly and Mark weren't together. But if you want a sweet, clean romance, I would say pick this up. On to what I am currently reading. I am still working on Human Beasts and Ghosts by Kian Zhangshu. I didn't realize this was two essay collections inside, so I finished the first one that was originally published as Written in the Margins of Life, and now I'm on to the actual human beast and ghost portion. And I've been reading this for May of the Moderns, run it by Margaret Pennard. I have three essays left, so I should finish it this month. And with this, and if I get my other read done, I will have completed May of the Moderns. And so the other read is I, for May of the Moderns, is out of a swiftly Nope. Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. It's his sci-fi, which I've never read before. So I picked this up just briefly. It wasn't really grabbing my attention, so I decided to put it down for now. Just the style of the writing is actually kind of familiar to this. By the way, these essays are very satirical, which I was I started reading them seriously, and then I'm like, what is wrong with this person? And then I realized, oh no, he's making fun of everything. This is satire. This is one of my weekend priorities. But the other book that I picked up this week was Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee, which is for the other readathon that I am doing. Chaos Queens, part of the Sky team, and this has Sky in it. This also doubles as one of the books I had chosen to do for my 2000 to 2023 reading goal. And this is about a woman who after escaping a manticore that killed her, everyone in her family except her dad because he wasn't there, she's decided she wants to train to kill them. And so you get some flashbacks of what her life was like as a child leading up to the manticore massacre that you get the manticore massacre. And then you're with her as she's training her rock, that's the giant bird behind her, which is trained to kill manticores. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm halfway through. I, again, it's the other one that I'm going to be finishing this week. This weekend. And then the last one I'll be finishing this weekend is The Last Gifts of the Universe by Rory August, which is one of our science fiction and fantasy contest books. I'm not reading these as fast as I, I had wanted to, but I have a little more focused reading time this weekend, so it'll be fine. I'll get them done. For my writing wrap up, not currently writing, again, just allowing the world to come to me. I am getting lots of ideas of things. <laughs> so what's really happening is I work a technical job, which doesn't always require my mind to be engaged. And so I'll be sitting there doing, well, especially the end of the month, we don't have as many clients coming in. And so I do more data entry. And so I've been daydreaming and jumping just from book to book, be like, oh, hey, here's a scene I do for that. Here's a scene I would do for that. So I haven't really settled on anything that I'm wanting to sit down and write. And I actually haven't put my butt in the seat to write anything either. And for other media, I am continuing to watch Elementary and really enjoy it. I forgot how long those seasons are when they're on network TV. But yes, the series so far, the first season has held up over time. And that is great for me because <laughs> I really love Lucy Liu. Like she was my driving factor to try the show and she's really the reason why I'm still watching. The biggest one. They have other great actors as part of the show as well. And then my husband and I were excited to see that MasterChef has started again here in the United States. They've only had one of the audition fields, but we like seeing the creativity that people have with food. 
and as my husband is very creative in the kitchen, it gives him ideas, which then makes my stomach happy. <laughs> so that has been my week, since this is probably going to be coming up after Memorial Day weekend. What did you guys do? Did you have fun? Is this one that you guys spend with family, or is this one you guys go traveling with? I'd love to know. Thank you, and have a great day.